labor policy of, of a globalized company like Disney. Um, could you or, or one of you both, uh, could you elaborate a bit on, on that? On that fact. <laughs> Hello. I guess the background of the work is the, um, this uh, continuous outflow of um, highly skilled labor from the Philippines, particularly um, artists in uh, performing arts, dance, and uh, theater arts. And the biggest, uh, one of the most, let's say, um, lucrative uh, employer would be uh, Hong Kong Disneyland and the cruise ships. Um, back in 2005, Hong Kong Disneyland opened, and it was, um, yeah, I guess around this time, 10 years ago, 2008, 2009, I did my thesis on the post exodus of. Um, uh, basically ballet dancers um, working in ballet Philippines to um, Hong Kong, to work in Hong Kong Disneyland. So during that time when Hong Kong Disneyland opened in 2006, there was a huge migration, basically talent drain in the Philippines of uh, artists. So in, it, was a, it had a huge impact in the um, artistic community. And since then, um, there has been a steady outflow of um, artists going into cruise ships and uh, Disneyland as kind of a step, um, as a natural progression of a career. Like you go into a, a dance company, for example, in the Philippines, like Ballet Philippines, and then afterwards, you know, for some financial stability, you would um, set, uh, work in Hong Kong Disneyland or cruise ships. And what is particular is that <coughs> There's a lot of Filipino entertainers in Hong Kong Disneyland. It's like 50% of the entertainers would be, the performers would be Filipinos. And um, uh, the kind of uh, work they do or the roles that are given to them are mostly anonymous background roles like uh, a coral, a zebra, I don't know, um, starfish, jellyfish, mm -hmm. waving the flag, but really kind of um, going from one character to another mm -hmm. in the span of an hour. So it's like, uh, yeah, this kind of labor. They don't really get the, the main characters, such as, you know, Snow White, Cinderella, because these are reserved for Western um, character performers. So they would hire uh, people coming from so somebody looking like white and Western. So... These was uh, these are the basically parameters and conditions, um, kind of the background of the work, or at least uh, the instigator or the what interested me to work on this piece, and somehow th this is the first part of uh, yeah. of uh, the series Happy Land, which deals with the labor, performance of happiness, and production of fantasy within this empire of happiness of Disney. And I think Happy Land also refers to, it's, you know, Disneyland, but also a slum in uh, Manila, is that right? Yes, it was a, a project by a previous president. Mm -hmm. Back then he was still mayor, Era Pestrada. And um, this was his charity slum. So he would give, um, like, you know, he would basically like do his campaign on this slum and called it Happy Land. So yeah. like all the giveaways and kind of uh, giving money here and there and um, not really long term, like short term. Yeah, short term, uh, what do you call this? Promotion. Yeah, it's not really long term change. So he called this place Happy Land and it still exists in the Philippines now. Yeah, so this irony that the happiest place mm -hmm. on earth, self-proclaimed, is Disneyland. At the same time, there is such a place in the Philippines, a slum area called yeah. Happy Land, yeah. proclaimed by this, um, uh, what do you call this, a movie star, actually, movie star turned politician. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, 
that's one of the ironies of the title, Happy yeah. Land. Okay, um, back to the performance. Why Snow White? Um, Snow White was the first uh, princess. She was practically the prototype of the Disney princess. And what else? I think She's one of the reasons why we chose it because it was the most alien to us. Yeah. Like the 1930s, 1930s uh, yeah. prototype of femininity. Uh, yeah, it's very exaggerated with the yeah, voice. The voice, it's very unique. physicality. And mm -hmm. It was basically the first success of Disney. Mm -hmm. yeah. So in a sense, he built an empire on pr this princess and the subsequent princesses mm -hmm. that came after her. So yeah, and her name is White. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Snow White. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And you really studied, obviously, her gestures and her behavior. And I wondered what um, sources you used to, um, to build this image on stage. Well, first, there was the film. So we watch the film over and over. And then there's also the merchandise. Uh, toys, toys coloring, books. coloring books, stickers, so all those gestures you see, uh, all those poses, uh, their facial expressions. You know, the eye is always in the corner. It's always <laughs> stilted. Yeah. Like the body is always asymmetrical. Nev it's never straight. Uh -huh. And the the weight is always uh, precarious. It's never stable. Mm -hmm. So it's always on one hip. You know, and then, uh, yeah, they are always on kind of some kind of heels. And mm -hmm. the physicality is always light and kind of bouncy. Um, and the actual character performers in theme parks. Yeah. The okay. way they interacted with um, the guests in the park. Like uh, different versions of Snow White from the Disneyland in Japan, the Disneyland in Hong Kong, the Disneyland in LA. Um, yeah, so it's 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 a study of Snow White in different uh, manifestations and context. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, the premise that we hijack something that we would never be, mm -hmm. even in the employment sector. Mm -hmm. And uh, something that we know as children, I mean, the Philippines uh, Disney stories are quite uh, prevalent. It's yeah. basically the, the fairy tales that we all grow up in. Uh -huh. yeah. And uh, it's manifested not only in the movies, it's in the songs. And in like, uh, if you buy a product, there's uh, song lyrics attached to it. Uh -huh. And then <laughs> it's like this, yeah. uh, it Constant just dominates the landscape, yeah. no? Uh -huh. And, uh, but then, so in a sense, it's kind of a factory of, 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 of um, people who are uh, brought up in this kind of um, culture and then like really ready-made bodies that go into uh -huh. labor. Uh -huh. Yeah, we don't have to teach them English because they're very educated in English and that we don't have to teach them the fairy tales because, you know, we, we all know it and then, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it seemed really exhausting <laughs> to see you performing. It was, um, I don't know what it was like for, for the rest of the audience, but it was really liberating that at the end you became normal persons or real humans. Um, but there was also an emphasis uh, during the performance on the 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 fact that she became kind of um, a housemaid the, with the seven dwarfs, dwarfs. Um, but that also relates to something. Um, maybe you can tell more about it about you know the the women in the Philippines who work abroad as housemaids and. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. It's all it's all these uh, modes and. Uh, how do you say, stereotypes of femininity. And um, yeah, uh, it's reflective also of uh, what kind of labor we export. Um, it's not just these, it's not just about service, 
uh, it's also about you know affection, this affective labor where mm. where we kind of actually care. It's kind of a gray area. It's like when when do we actually interact in a real and authentic way, or is it our job? You know, so a lot of Filipinos are working in this kind of profession, like caregivers and uh, even also domestic helpers, domestic helpers uh, yes, nurses, yeah. mm. you know, um, physical therapists. Yeah. Mm. All these things. So we kind of, it's also this uh, kind of cell, also this uh, it's, it's labor. affection. Yeah, it's yeah. labor, yeah. Affective labor. Mm -hmm. So I guess the hybridity of Snow White and, and the Filipino body highlights this domesticity and labor, or at least um, for people who are more aware of it, can read into that, this layer. Basically, we found a lot of parallels into uh, with uh, Snow White's identity uh, with with our own, in a sense. Yeah. Mm. Which is weird because so Snow White is somebody we can never be. Yeah. But then we kind of use it. That's why we hijack it. We use it, and then we find <coughs> we repeat things over and over until we can finally express something out of yeah, it. Yeah, something else comes out that uh, is in our condition rather than in Snow White's condition, for example. Maybe some questions from the audience? Um, first of all, uh, thank you so much for this wonderful performance. It was truly um, an act of resistance on so many levels against these uh, discriminating labor policies, but also, of course, against this whole patriarchal narrative of stereotypes of femininity and so on. Um, and, well, yes, white supremacy also in general, obviously. Um, I actually had a question about um, gender and sexualization. For me, it was very interesting how you uh, show Snow White, uh, the Disney princess, the first Disney princess, as you explained. But also what is so interesting about Snow White is that it's, well, the youngest Disney princess. She was, I think, in the story only 13 years old. Um, and many scholars have commented on the fact that um, uh, most Disney princesses has, have been, um, well, very much sexualized. Uh, think about the Little Mermaid, who is like 16 years old and, you know, is wearing this tiny little bra and, you know, I'm not going to go in that. But, um, well, Snow White um, is really a child in the movie. I mean, she's 13 years old, but really um, this whole childish idea of innocence, of playfulness, you know, the high-pitched voices you were doing, this... Um, idea is constantly highlighted. Also, um, she has a very childlike body. She has no breasts, no hips, and so on. Uh, also, her prince is this weird genderless type of, you know, masculinity. Uh, again, a lot of other Disney princesses are this, you know, bodybuilder type, but this prince in Snow White is really this, <coughs> has this genderless quality. Um, and I was thinking, um, well, the fact, of course, that you work with these two genders in the performance, I was uh, wondering how you tackled this whole idea of gender and sexuality. I think the main, the main sort of uh, structure that we held onto was really the Snow White that we saw in the film. And, uh, well, like how, like all these, like how, how she moved, how she spoke. Uh, so we stick with this code, you know. Mm -hmm. And as long as we stick with the code, then we, we, we kind of sort of get to express something out of it. You know, uh, this version of femininity anyway, you know. Yeah, there's this uh, faithfulness to the material, mm -hmm. and the material itself um, speaks from a certain context. And uh, I guess the fact that um, we're not 13 and he's a, <laughs> he's a I'm a man. He's <laughs> <laughs> really a man. <laughs> so um, yeah, it, 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 
and the fact that I actually had ballet training and he didn't. So this this was really quite challenging vocabulary for him and uh, quite interesting that it wasn't for me because yeah, somehow the snow, all the princesses um, in terms of physicality derived from um, kind of a balletic Western tradition or Western royalty. And um, that gets reproduced in the in the Disney films, and uh, yeah, it's it's in a way a confrontation with our own background, um, how we are brought up, and uh, what we know and what we don't know. Um, of course, um, for me, uh, sp this is the first speaking work, and somehow it just we just had to speak because it's so iconic of. Um, so suddenly the voice comes into play in terms of gender and sexuality. Um, I guess the, now it's a little bit more normal that we can get easily into it. But in the beginning, uh, I, I was doing this with Joshua in Hong Kong. We were like, how did we do it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess it was about happiness first rather than the princess. So we, in the very, very beginning of the research, since it was about happy land, performance of happiness, we were trying out different ways of embodying happiness. And it all was a bit wishy-washy. And we thought that, okay, we hone in in one very specific kind of happiness and the one that is being performed by Snow White. She's just this innocent light and kind of... a uh, uh, embodiment of uh, somebody who's just pure and uh, yeah. happy. She talks to animals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. She has this ability yeah. to talk to animals. She's that pure. So um, I think it was more of that, uh, of, of we were more oriented to this um, performance of happiness rather than performance of sexuality and gender. It just became more apparent because of of the that our bodies doesn't fit the 13 year old snow white yeah we're recording it <laughs> um have you ever been curious about the actual snow white like the one coming from popular culture from north europe did you check it out or we were just focusing on the Disney version of Snow White? I think most of the material was really just Disney, Snow White. But I think in the beginning, yeah, I've read the Snow White and Rose. Like there's several uh, different versions of Snow White and that the dwarf was actually not uh, seven, but just one and actually it's about Snow White, the Rose, and the Dwarf. I mean, of course, they, Disney have completely twisted it to to their advantage and to their uh, world view. And this is uh, this is the world view that is reproduced in the Philippine context. And I guess this is um, something that um, we've uh, through through yeah being Filipinos have embodied. And I guess really want to tackle. Hey, hi, um, a simple question maybe, or I'm not sure, maybe it's not a simple question, but why the happy ending? I mean, happy ending, entre guillemets, um, the Disney happy ending. I I was very relieved, honestly, to hear at a certain certain point to see you as a, as performers, well uh, after the metamorphosis and to hear your voices, your real voices, let's say, and then you did decide to kind of go back to the Disney universe or to have that closure. So I was wondering, from an artistic point of view, why that that ending? Why why did you need to end? in a more traditional way, or the Disney traditional way? Um, <coughs> the, the ending for us is reflective of how we really see ourselves. You know, this 
how this appropriated culture is also ingrained. We cannot really escape it. I mean, I, I think in English, you know, so we wanted to end with a more authentic note that even if we try to take off this costume or this mask, it's still there, you know, it's always going to be there. Uh, it's really deeply a part of us. And it's not as if, you know, it's neatly categorized as you can just take it off and say, okay, this is here and this is there. It's not as easy as that. And I think the power of um, reproduction, to take it and to reproduce it and to corrupt it through reproduction, I think there's, uh, yeah, that's the power of, of, of mimicry. It never would be the same. And through several um, repetition, it just sometimes corrupts itself or goes against it or just runs away with, with the image. And it's not Snow White anymore. It talks about something else. But the, since the image is so strong and image, people know it, so there's always a, a, you know, a base context to work with. So something to, you know, uh, there's always a tension with with the with the base character or where it comes from from the original hmm? <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's it's not as if we you know we destroy it and we're not it because yeah all these songs we we sing it gladly yeah it's it's our childhood it's you know yeah. it's there yeah we have we, we we have fun with it. It's not as if it's, um, yeah. yeah. It's n yeah. We have a very friendly <laughs> relations. relations with all these influences. Yesterday, but we had a member in the audience who was Filipina and living here for fourteen years. Yeah, and uh, we ate somewhere afterwards, and then. We all of a sudden started singing Disney songs and she knew every word, I knew every word. Yeah. So it was just like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? did, she, did she send this photo to you? Not yet. No, no, on yeah. Facebook. We're friends on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she, I think it, it was, she was six and on the photo she was Snow White. Oh. In the Philippines. It was her, her costume, Snow White. So that was one of the reasons why she came to see the work <laughs> as well. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. But but we did want to, at some point in, during the creation process, we did uh, consider actually taking everything off. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We were so sick of the costume that <laughs> we were so convinced that um, we're not going to do any costume. Yeah. And we're just wearing these yeah. ski outfits. <laughs> And of course, all the signifiers went out. Uh, you, people couldn't just couldn't recognize what we're trying to do. Yeah. So the costume is like the color is a costume is very important. The, the basically the elements of Snow White and Disney, such a uh, dominating visual. Um, yeah, it dominates the visual uh, visuality of it. have a question. I don't know if you have an answer. Could you maybe, did you compare the reaction of audiences in different cultures towards your performance? Like like Western now and like you said you perform in Hong Kong. Is there any difference between the audience acceptance? Um, in, in Hong Kong it was uh, a work in progress showing like very, the, the very beginning and it was actually with Joshua. So it was a different princess. Uh, and uh, in the Philippines, it was already with Russ. And um, I guess it was more apparent the reading of the domestic helper and effective labor. This was brought up um, immediately during the feedback. Um, so I guess another layer of, of reading is more, yeah, it, it depends who's, who's reading what and what they can access. Um, in Dusseldorf, they thought we were both men. Mm. <laughs> 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 
so yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's definitely different readings of of the work. Mm. Yesterday it was both women. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> here, yeah, here, it's like uh, Russ is definitely a woman. What what kind of readings? So you you think that those Disney archetypes are completely recognizable in the whole world, actually? That this, you know, that still every culture reads the, I know, mm. this patriarchal part of, of of Snow White and. I'm not sure the na the story, but definitely the image of Snow White is uh, everywhere. I mean, mm, the merchant. I mean, there's this princess franchise, like a, a resurgence of. Um, uh, they found. That that uh, it's so lucrative, this princess um, franchise that they there's so much products around princesses, uh, the Disney mm -hmm. princesses like school bags, notebooks, uh, pencils, you name it, they have it. So mm -hmm. I think children now they don't exactly know who Snow White is, but they know the image. There was an interesting thing we discovered while we we're researching. We found a <laughs> this this uh, video of uh, some event uh, Disney does in different in different places. Um, it's called the Princess Academy. So they invite all these children, and you know they learn how to be a princess. And we saw one very striking uh, in India. No? In India, and there were these like I don't know hundreds of girls, and almost yeah. all of them are Snow White. No, no, no. They were wearing right? different. Uh, like one row is uh, in pink. But there is like mostly. And one row is something else. I remember like this. Like a mix Snow of White, yeah. really. Are they yeah. All Snow White? The mix was in in Manila. <laughs> ah, okay, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so we were surprised about this Princess Academy because during the process we were thinking of ah, let's make a princess uh, obstacle course. Yeah, yeah. You know, like wherein we we pass through different tasks in order to become a princess. So. Somehow we were just looking at on YouTube what kind of obstacle courses we can kind of um, um, copy for our creation. And we encountered the Princess Academy. So we were really shocked that they were doing it already yeah. to kids. That's crazy. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, of course, it's a, it's a good way to sell merchandise. So everybody is in, in their princess costumes that the event had sold. And they were really teaching what was... Yeah, the, uh, was there was a hostess, and um, in the Philippines, no. In the Philippines, they would be taught how to drink tea, uh, how to sit. Uh, also, they had maids. They had ma yeah, that was weird. They had maids around them serving them. Yeah, so. and maid costumes. And maid costumes, yeah. Yeah, so like how to sit, how to, how to say thank you, and things like this. So, I'm really shocked that it existed already, and in this way. I mean, to have have maids. Yeah, and it was in a mall. <laughs> yeah, it was. In <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so so it's um. Yeah, through through the creation process, actually, we discovered all this um, uh, different ways that they try to push the merchandise or the the franchise. Um, through events, through mall shows, through appearances, Disney appearances, Disney princess appearances. It was even this Disney concert, no? In Manila. Yeah, like uh, like Leia Salonga oh. was like singing the Disney songs and like big stadium. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What? So yeah. I mean they try to they try to um uh, have it in different manifestations. So I don't think the story actually matters at the end. It's really the the merchandise. Yeah, and, and in that India thing, there was uh, they had actual uh, white princesses come out and teach and teach them. So I was like, yeah, that was really painful to watch. Yeah. <laughs> Um, 
about the gestures, you said very interestingly, like um, the gesture that, that you notice that the body is always asymmetrical, that the weight is never stable, that you know there's a lightness, there's a bounciness, and so on. Um, how um, intercultural are these gestures? And with that, I mean, like, do you um, did you notice like are these um, gestures are like in many cultures the same? Um, they keep coming back uh, in many cultures as a symbol for femininity or graciousness and so on? Or do you really think that they are a result of this, you know, globalized Disney franchise? Um, did you notice, for example, uh, because you said like, oh yeah, um, we saw a lot of links, references to classical ballet, which is this typical Western tradition, um, but did you notice, for example, differences between, I don't know, um, Disneyland Hong Kong and Disneyland Paris, or uh, completely not? There's, uh, the Snow White in Disneyland Paris is very bitchy. She was very blasé. <laughs> yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's like, uh, like uh, a picture. And then... Uh, and the Snow White in Japan was much more gentle and polite. And yeah, really <laughs> a Japanese way. Yeah. <laughs> um, <In> and America. <laughs> Americans are like on acid or yeah. something. It's like... Yeah, like on, yeah on coke or something. Oh, I really like your lips. They had like an attention deficit this yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. really quick. <laughs> so it dip it's also in quite interesting how, you know, this this uh, cookie cut can be quite different in each context and how they interact. Um, yeah, it was interesting. The French was very uninspired. <laughs> 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 <Like we> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The most annoying is the Americans because they're like, ah, <laughs> completely, um, and with the accent, of course, this is, uh, uh, yeah. It's yeah. a little bit more, I don't know, fake, a little, you know, she, yeah. she felt, she doesn't feel, yeah, more yeah. fake. Yeah, they overdo it yeah. in a very American <laughs> way. I yeah. feel they all overdo it. <laughs> <laughs> The Japanese one was the most convincing, mm -hmm. the most gentle. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really, really nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What was the question again? Yeah. Yeah, also, yeah, the smiling, smiling is definitely kawaii. Oh, that was difficult, the smiling. I never used to smile in the other works. So this was really a challenge in the beginning. It's like holding it. And <laughs> Facial muscles. Uh. <laughs> really, the, it's the labor of performing happiness is quite, um, quite tasking. Mm. I th it's really based on ballet. I mean, if, if you have ballet like this, if you skew it a little bit, that's already Disney. It's like mm. ballet is symmetrical, and Disney is an uh, asymmetrical version of, of it. Mm. But uh, then, uh, yeah, it, you just trace it back to, to Western Europe and how um, uh, class, royalty, is performed. So... Disney has this American version of it. And it's also interesting, their bodies. Um, if you, we actually really just realized how skewed it was when we looked at, you know, the merchandise, how broken it was, and how almost impossible it, is, it was to actually imitate. And also their bodies, their waistlines are like, I don't know. Yeah. Impossible. So. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, so we really try to be faithful to the material. So if the material is really like this and like this and like that, we we analyze each and try to do as much as possible the same. I tried to wear a corset one time, <laughs> but it was much too uncomfortable. I couldn't do it anymore. 
Okay, I think a lot of people have to catch a train, so we'll have to stop. Although I feel like we could keep on talking about this uh, performance maybe in the bar downstairs. But thank you so much for this talk and for the performance. Um, and we'll let you relax. <laughs>